bug and a dog. A bug and a dog sat on a log. The, the dog said that bug is so little I cannot see This vlog. Okay. Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. This was a video viewer requested video. And it is, as we can tell by the title, to talk to you about um, teach your child to read in 100 easy lessons. This is the reading book. I'm sorry for the glare. This is the book that I use to teach my children how to read, but they're of but of course I'm gonna have uh, just a little chit chat before I go into this. Okay, so going back to the beginning, um, if you've been on my channel, I think I've talked a little bit about this, but when I, I grew up homeschooled, I was a homeschooled graduate. And when I started homeschooling, um, it's kind of interesting. I didn't have the confidence to do, just go and do into it um, because as a graduate, all you remember are your last years and certain parts of your earlier years. Um, but insofar as teaching, it was a completely different um, side of the coin. And so I had my mother-in-law come and help me. And this is the one that my mother used, but the one that my uh, mother-in-law, who was a public school, um, private school teacher for kindergarten for almost 30 years, she came and helped me homeschool the first two and they used a alpha alpha phonics book in the victory blue book i might not be saying those names quite right i will put them down here they used those and that's what they did to teach school or um to teach reading so i did that and i just found that i didn't really like it the, the way the Alpha Phonics and the Victory Blue Book um, teaches is definitely, I would say, more of a classroom setting type of thing where you can teach multiple students, whereas I think this is a definitely more a one-on-one -on -one type of textbook, teaching book, something. I'm not really sure. Lesson book. Anyway, so I didn't really connect with my daughter with reading and we were struggling and I wasn't really sure how to teach some of the concepts because it is just like a list of things to teach and then the child does. Um, so I went to this one. Again, this is one that my mother recommended. It's obviously if it worked for her, it'll most likely work for me mainly because we think alike. And if we think alike, then we're probably going to be able to teach in that way. So that was my thinking and that's when I went to this one. Um, so far I'm teaching child number four to read this and just like with all of my children that I've taught to read using this book, um, I don't even finish the whole thing before they pretty much can read pretty well. Um, phonetic wise, I'm just, I hand them another book and if we start having lots of difficulty, we can go back to that, but I literally go to the back of the book where there is a story that you read and if they um, pass it with flying colors then we're ready to move on that kind of thing um, the book something that my husband didn't and let me let me talk a little bit more then I'm gonna flip the camera around because you're gonna see everything backwards because I'm using my phone um, and then I'll tell you some of the things that um, my husband didn't like about it um, and my my in-laws and things like that so anyway we use this book I don't um, there is prompts on the side of the teacher to read and then the student follows I don't typically do that starting out a little bit more yes but even still it feels so twaddled down that I still kind of um, word it a little differently but I think I have the confidence in that that I think a newer homeschooler it would be helpful for. 
Um, another thing that they have you do is the writing. And so this is literally, oh, you know what? I just realized I'm going to have to cover up our last name. Um, this is what I do. This is the writing paper from Handwriting Without Tears. And so it's got the lines on it that are like that. And then I write out a narration. It's so simple, but they're basic words and then they can copy them. And this is how I do the writing portion of that. And no, all of the kids, that one's a little bit more difficult and they struggle a little bit more, especially with the letter um, sizing. I feel like that doesn't um, really, with all of my kids, that really doesn't um, click until about third or fourth grade. I don't know if that's a universal thing or if that's just my kids. But that's what it is, and so far, two out of the four that are going through this, they seem to be okay, and their letter um, sizing is getting... My eldest, her letter sizing is fine. The second eldest, it's definitely improved so much. Um, I still can't seem to get him to understand peas. Other than that, I really haven't um, noticed anything, but peas for sure, he still does a capital when it should be lowercase. I don't understand why that one is hard to grasp okay so this is what we use I really like it as I said um, we start out with doing using something different um, but it didn't click with me and then I know that Tanya from Project Happy Home did a review and comparison with other curriculums and I think that was a phenomenal video so I'm gonna leave it linked down below and I think Lindsay from Mama Schmooze Homeschool Reviews also did some pretty good um, reviews and in depth and stuff on that and I'm also gonna leave that link down below because they did a great job I mean why am I making a video because I can point you to that um, for those that are looking for this um, but again this is a viewer requested video I'm more than happy to do it I'm more than happy to share why I like this one and it really is this the simple layout and so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip the camera around and we're gonna have just a quick walkthrough Okay, so this is how the lessons are laid out. Again, if it's red, that's something that you say, and if it's black, it's something that they're gonna say. So what I would do is I would point to here, point to the M, and I'm just, I don't say all this. I just, the first lesson I started going like this, okay, we're gonna go, mmm, and then the child was to go, mmm, and then we're, all right, we're gonna say it fast now, mmm. And then we would, just do that. We would do it with that sound and then we would go and do it with this one. Okay, let's do this one now. And that's what we would do. And I don't do any of this. I don't do... That's what I would do. This stuff, I didn't really do it. Um, obviously, the say it fast, as I just showed you, that is how our lesson would go. Then we would go back. Mm. And then I'd be like, okay, we're done. And then it wasn't daunting to them. I didn't do anything else. It wasn't daunting. When I said we're going to learn to read, it sounds really daunting. And they were like, what? Uh, okay. The next day we would do this again. Go through these letter sounds. And then they would be like, oh, let's learn a different one. Every single one of my children have done this. So then we would combine lesson two and three and put this together. And then we're like, oh my goodness, you read a word. Yay! And then we would just kind of continue until you get more um, uh, lessons, words, and whatnot. So one of the things that my husband really didn't like isn't so much here. Isn't so much here. It's this. So when they have the two vowels together, they want to emphasize this one. And so they would have a smaller letter and then the upper letter. And he really didn't like that. So far, insofar as reading, that hasn't affected my kids. And maybe it, I'm not going to say it affects their handwriting because my kids write before they read. And so it is what it is. Um, but I would personally say that it didn't affect their handwriting, even with all the stuff that we were just talking about. But um, that bothered my husband insofar as just how this book was laid out. It, again, hasn't really affected my kids. They can read pretty well. And um, 
we kind of talk about the vowels. Insofar as the phonetics, we haven't really had any issues um, with phonetics being a problem. We just, all right, CK has a K sound, and look, it's emphasizing that sound, you know, and it would just go on and on and on. So once we're about, I would say, here, this is when I start putting in some of those writing things from here. Um, my kids learn to write using their names, and then they want to write all the names of their loved ones, and so we do that, and it just builds upon it. So, basically, you get to this point, and as you can see, we're past that. My, my um, five-year-old, almost six-year-old, did this one today, and the video that you just saw, she was reading this one. Um, she still gets B's and D's mixed up, but as you could tell with that video or not, I don't really know how well the sound is. I had a, my daughter um, film it. Um, she did um, a very good job reading it because she recognized that this is a bug and this is a dog. So we had the two, the B's and the D's, but she did really good on that. So um, I don't know what else there is really to um, share. I hope this is helpful to see if this is something that you're looking for. Um, as you can see, we get into um, more of the same kind of letter writing, not what you see there, but there is no grammar. We're just learning words here. So pretty much at this point where my daughter is, where I just had it, where are we? Where we are now, this is pretty much when I kind of stop using this as a to teach your child to read type of book. And we kind of switched to the McGuffey. The McGuffey, I would say, um, at this point, you know, we're less than in 60. And this is not one that we do every single day. Maybe we take off a week or two in between and we pick it back up. It really just depends on the child. I do not want to stress it with the child. And um, so what happens after this, and let me get a McGuffey reader to show you. At this, this, so I've only done this with the last two, and I wish I would have done it with all four. Um, but then we go in to our McGuffey first, first reader, and then we basically transfer to this book after this book. And so then we would have our lesson. Okay, and then these are the, um, like, spelling words they would have. And so then we'll go over these. And the first day, they copy something from here. And it has to be a sentence that has these words in here. Words, <laughs> these words in it. So I know that learn is going to be a little bit more difficult for them. And tear. And so they, because at this point, they can pretty much do that. Um, nice is going to be one that they're going to need. So they're going to copy this sentence one day. Then they will copy, let's say, these two sentences the next day. And then we'll go over there and ask them. To, then I will go over and ask them to um, write these words or dictate these words. And then we'll go on to the next lesson. So maybe the next week we'll do lesson two, or maybe we get two lessons done in a week. Who knows? So we'll just do that. As you can see, here's lesson two. Here's lesson three. We didn't have any um, spelling words. But with this one, school is something that we need to go over. Books are something we need to go over. So we'll read the lesson, and then, again, I'll have them copy it. But then instead of, he's sleeping, but instead of the words that are here... I'll just have them dictate the sentence here and then we just keep practicing and we'll just keep doing it and this is more of the the Charlotte Mason way of learning but um, again that's only been something that I've done in the last couple of years not something that um, I implemented from the start unfortunately so I hope that helps that's how my kids have learned to read I have a almost 12 year old that I mean, this is her reading pile here and here. This girl doesn't stop reading. 
up there. Those boxes are full of books over there. So prolific reader like her mother. I have a 10 year old, almost 11 year old son who's a little bit less of a reader. Um, but there is not a day that goes by that he doesn't read something. Um, just not more, maybe more challenging books. Um, so he's read, he's learned to read using these and seems to be fine. Um, he's inhaled all of the Sherlock and I mean the original Sherlock, not a more contemporary translation of it. So I really don't, um, worry about him and reading it. And then my seven year old, um, tries to pick up books like, you know, Kim there and reads it. So what happens at that point is I let them do that. I let the seven and almost six year old read um, these more difficult books that I know that they, let's, let's pull this one out. Let's pull this one out. I know that the six and seven year old pick up these books to read them. And I'll be honest, they probably couldn't t read that very well, but they will in a few days bring me the whole book with the with it being having with the book having different bookmarks throughout the um days in between and they will have read it mommy we re I read this book it was really good and what happens is when they're reading it they may not be able to read that whole page but they're taking words out of it paw and safe big hug across and that's how they're reading it they're just collecting little word nuggets and yes i let them read those books because they think that they're um doing some big kid stuff and i want them to be encouraged by that i want them to try and one day they'll actually get a, a lot of a lot out of it from a book like this so um i hope i hope this video is helpful I hope it gave you the information you're looking for. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And I will link those videos up down below for you. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.